This is test two of streaming to Twitch and to YouTube, and maybe this time it'll work. Let's see. Yep, yep, it's it's on both now. Yeah, it is there. It is there. This is just a test. Do not adjust your vertical. Do not adjust your horizontal. This is only a test. We are in control, and that's actually not right either, but anyway. <laughs> All right, so we're on both. Welcome back, Ron. Yeah, we're hey. on both. Back. Yes. Oh, so it's showing up on YouTube too? Yes, yes, it is. Um, there's a slight lag because you have, yeah, there you go. You're appearing there now. Um, yeah, I just needed to. I needed to get rid of the uh, the connections to both, and then just reconnect them. One of them's live stream or events. One of them's YouTube events, and the other one is stream now. And okay. I to the stream now, so. Um, yeah, I just checked on YouTube, and I did see hey. it was coming in. There's a. Hey, there's D. There's Hi, D. D. How you doing, Hello. D? D is our first. Um, <laughs> Our first, first chat, chat, eh? <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, yeah, just playing around with this is uh, I wanted to try to dual stream off of Twitch and YouTube, and the only thing is I don't see, I don't see unless it's going to combine the chats, which it probably will. Yeah, uh, probably. Yeah, on Twitch and let me see what it does on Twitch. Hang on. Here's DB3D Dan too. Hello, how are you? Yeah, if you don't mind, Ron, go ahead and... Yeah, I'm just logging in right now. Yeah, enter some text. Okay. Hey, I haven't seen, I haven't seen Mex, Mex in a long, long time. How you doing, bud? Nice to see you. I'm just playing huh. around with some software. Got a friend request from someone called... Uh, Turtle Pan 34. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Turtle Pan is... Uh, is John? He is. Uh, what if I could? Um, Looks like he's requesting. He's one of one of my uh, my woodworking uh, uh, friends. In fact, in fact, uh, Turtle Pan has been in in Twitch. Yeah. Okay, I, I just sent a message. Pass one, two, three. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, was, there it goes. Yeah. yeah. That's on Twitch. And see. Uh, uh, Dan is over on YouTube, I can tell because of the icon. Um, yeah, I, I've actually got some stuff I'm going to do. Um, and, and really, what, what, I, what I'm going to do is I've got a course that I'm teaching. And I'm just kind of trying to check out different software. And I have to make videos. And I thought, well, I'll stream it, too. And so well, this OBS is would probably be your best bet to make the video and then yeah. edit yes. afterwards. Yes, but if I stream... Then I can only have one person, and if and if any of the students want to come in, then I can I can offer them that also. So, um, the the, the ah, software we, crashed we, use, somebody. we crashed here. There's, there's Luana. Hello, Luana. Um, just doing a test on on some stream. I'm going to be doing some electronics, uh, and uh, I'm trying to get them. Get it working on both of the streams right now, Luana. Yeah, Luana was with us on. Um, I crashed YouTube on her. <laughs> it's, um, Luana was with us. I want to say two Sundays ago, Ron. I don't remember if you were there or not. But, um, yeah, I'm just keeping an eye on Twitch. What's going on over at Give Twitch? It a damn. Thanks a lot. Like like I said, right now we were just testing things out, and I had just gotten YouTube connected there. Um, okay, later, Dan. Have a good night. Sleep. Yes. Have Have a nice evening. Ah, he's offering you some books if you are interested. So he has a bunch of old electronic books from the U.S. Navy that he used when when he was training. If you want them. It. it Sure. <laughs> um, you can never have too many books. Well, but, yeah, you can because we have too many books and they topple on top of you and kill you. 
Um, yeah. Yeah. You can have too many books then. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Give me a second. I'm just going to grab something. All righty. But uh, yes, definitely hit the thumbs up, guys. Uh, like I said, this is this is just a test, guys, for right now. Um, I will actually have some content, um, and I'll probably do the content tonight. Uh, I haven't, I haven't really, I haven't really, uh, uh, I didn't really think that I would get a lot of people watching and stuff, but it looks like it. <laughs> yeah, in fact, in fact, the first thing, okay, um, and and I, I have a, a virtual document. I'll tell you what, let me see if I copied this to my desktop. I don't remember if I did or not, because that might be an issue. Um, did I copy all the data to the desktop? Um, I know it's I know it's right here on this. Uh, let's see. And you know I may not want I may not want to do this live either. For I don't know. Let me see. Series in parallel circuitry. I do this. See, I do have I do have the curriculum already, though. Cool, Mac. Um, yeah, I know they did, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. Resistance, transistance. Time. And see, I don't know. Maybe, maybe a. Uh, maybe I should just stick to videos and have. Perhaps like, you know, a private link. I don't know. I don't know, guys. I don't know. I don't know how many people would be interested in me ranting about about uh, series circuits and parallel circuits. But since, well, series and parallel is kind of like one of the big fundamentals that you should learn. Well, in, in any in, type of, for any power, like AC versus in, DC, how AC converts to DC, and the math and the ohms. And the, and the, the syllabus, or the, what I'm going to be teaching... Is going to start with numbers, color codes, resistance series, breadboards, amperage. So, so yes, so yes, definitely. Well, at least you don't have to teach them about vacuum tubes. <laughs> um, yeah, my friend, oh, right there, is is naked Ron. <laughs> Ron, uh, Ron is uh, um, you. You've been in there with him. He's a Canadian Maker Project. Ron didn't laugh at that, did he? Did he? <laughs> and he was the dirtiest look in the world. <laughs> I know that's what I got. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's Canadian Canadian Maker Project, Luana. Um, <sighs> yeah, I'm just trying to find something in my book here. I, I actually I actually taught the industrial electronics class last spring, uh, Mech, and uh, we are changing over from 7400 logic chips to this and that's how i taught it uh using using the the uh, arduino and this happens to be a, a, a redboard but you know um, and uh, that's what it's going to i do teach an industry a uh, internet of things class that uh oh well, i thought i had a raspberry pi up here that has a raspberry pi but um this is a uh, this is a capacitance meter that, yep. I, that I put together at one time. Well, Can you guys I don't look naked, but to let you know, uh, I got the word naked wrong because I threatened one of the YouTubers I would come on naked. I was naked after a shower, and he's like, still come on. We want you in here. So I threw something on and came on, and that's how I got naked wrong. Can, you guys, you guys know what this is? Do I have it uh, I'm going to say that's a. Let's see, let me I'm going to say it's an LCD screen on a board. Since I'm playing around with the, with the, uh, let's see, share my screen. No, no, no. I just have to maximize me. Uh, this is new software that I'm, that I'm testing. But here, let, let's let's see. Uh, and it is upside down. Yes. See this? Yeah, that's that's not two there we go there we go what is that guys yes it is an oscilloscope exactly this this is an oscilloscope um put that together oh i'd say i'd say about four or five years ago 
And I've been meaning to make a case for it, but I haven't gotten around to it for some reason. Well, this should look familiar to you, though. Hold on. Let me see. Hold on. Let me see. Well, yeah, it says it right up on top. It's a regulated power supply. Yeah, this is for the this is for my ham exam, believe it or not. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we have to go for power supplies, uh, SDB transmission, single sideband, FM transition to FM receivers, and I have to remember the path of all these. Precisioning measuring equipment lab is that what PML was? I remember, uh, right? Yep. <laughs> no, no, but you know, I have I have capacitors. When I do a face to face class, I have capacitors that are as big as this cup is. Okay, and we well, can't see your cup. You're not showing your screen. Oh, that's because I gave I gave the pass the baton to run, run <laughs> as big as this. Literally, literally, one oh, yeah. fair one farad capacitors guys and i've i've wanted to charge them up but th that'd probably kill somebody you know if 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 you threw it at them but when when i was in the air force we used to do that we used to take and charge of capacitors and throw them at people yes that would hurt <laughs> i've had one i've had one blow up on me and hit me right here the the I put it back in and i was looking down into the power supply and all of a sudden you know Oh yeah, don't God. put them in backwards. <laughs> yep, yep, exactly, exactly. Don't let the magic smoke out. Yep. Um, this class is is not uh, electronic applications, which electronic applications we we teach. Uh, um, yep, it does magic smoke at that. We teach uh, um, capacitance. This one is basically AC/DC circuits, Kirchhoff's law, Ohm's law, um, soldering. Um, Combination circuits, ammeters, potentiometers, uh, real stats. At the end, we kind of go into multi-sim, which is a, an electronic uh, circuit uh, program. We do complex circuits, a galvanometer, uh, but that's kind of that's kind of why this all started. I, I may or may not, um, you know, have uh, have students. Uh, I wasn't really planning on having students, but. Hello, Jim. Jim yeah. is uh, is one of my colleagues back in uh, back back at work. Um, how you doing, Jim? Let's see, that came out over there. You know, it actually comes out pretty good and shows you if it's YouTube and shows you if it's if it's Twitch. I like that. I really like that. Yeah. Uh, versus the 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 restream. So here's my question: Under your picture of you on the screen when they can see both of us it says primary text what's that all about oh it's just it's just just that it's captions i was playing with it and i wanted to see which one was was primary text and which one was was secondary text um yeah i just never turned it off that's okay. that's, that's there um, now can you display what chat is showing under your thing if you want to highlight something that's important it doesn't or? well let me let me that's a good that's a good check because remember stream um yeah. Was it stream? Yes. The free yes. can do that. Yes. Look. Look. Um, see. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. How do you teach without planning on having students? Well, originally, or what I have been, what I've been asked to do, is to make a video, and that's really the reason for this. Now, like I'm saying, I'm just playing around with this and, and such, but. Um, I'm just supposed to give them a video. And uh, and then I thought, well, let me just try to do some streams and possibly I can either, you know, put the video together, which I haven't been recording this at all. So um, I guess it'll save on YouTube. YouTube will YouTube is recording it right now. And as yeah. soon as you end it, it's going to take at least two to three hours to recompress yeah, it. There you go. Um, but there is there is a record feature. Where did I see that? Restream, Destinations, Live Studio, Analytics, Scheduler. I thought there was. There's a more. I may cut us off, guys. Hang on a second. Let me see. Destinations, Analytics, Scheduler, Monitor, Recordings. There is a cloud recording of this. Um, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna press it. But hello, Mike. How are you? 
the electrifying stuff, huh? Yeah, and I guess it could be something like that. Um, yeah, um, like in the captions, uh, let's see, let's change the primary text to, uh, um, let, let's, let's do the intro, and, and, and I'm not going to use this, I'm, uh, syllabus, syllabus, review, syllabi, <laughs> I can't spell syllabus, uh, review. You know, it could be it could be something something like that. So if I put that in there, and I show it, okay, I took I took uh, that chat off. Oh, it oh because it's I think it's secondary. No, hide, show primary text. I guess it must have not. What is that? There we go. What there is that? Go. Is that a third? Yeah, text? it's a lower third. But it's probably called right. Yeah, and see, there's my primary, secondary. Yeah, that's and lower third. third. That would be kind of like a lower third. Yeah. And see, I just took and turned on just the one that says primary text. I hit it. There's, I guess it says primary text, secondary text is what it says. Yeah, and then there's there's the one that I just made. Yeah. Yeah, it's on both uh, YouTube and on Twitch right now for for testing purposes only. Yes. So does this give me, and I don't even know if this is how you spell it. I guess, no, I guess not. No. Tertiary? How do you spell that? No, I thought there might be a third one that I could put in there, but there isn't. So if I delete that, now can I do that? No, it didn't do that either. Hide. No, it didn't do that. Uh, inbox. Yeah, see, it put Trishery in there. I don't know if that's how you spell it or not. But okay, sign in. Back to the chat. Yeah, uh, Mac. That's that's what I'm planning to do: is stream on both YouTube and uh, uh, Twitch. The reason is, is because a I want to go back to, to streaming on YouTube, also stay on Twitch, and there's some people that don't don't do Twitch, and some people that don't do YouTube, or you know I'm sure a lot of people do YouTube, but there's those on Twitch, and I don't want to just run out on Twitch. Um, I really enjoy Twitch, um, but I, I need I need to add YouTube back in, you know for for everything. Um, <laughs> Mike says that, that mech is brilliant and so handsome, you know. Yes, voltage is equal to current times resistance. That is Ohm's law. Very yep. good. Or you can, if you have it like this, let me see if we can get back into the live stream here. There we go. No, uh, Jim, I teach electron flow. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> and and for for those that may or may not know, um, there's two there's two theories. One is whole flow, where it goes from, uh, and I always get these backwards from positive or from negative to positive, and then the conventional current, which what, how, how does current flow from negative to positive, right, or positive to negative? Yeah, but the two the two are. One is whole flow and one is and one is uh, um, uh, uh, electron flow, and it's really the same thing, but it's it's conventional. You know. There you go. Something you should recognize. Nightbot. Did Nightbot pop up? Really? Yeah, Nightbot's going to pop up because it's posting in your chat. So. Okay. Yeah, on Twitch. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And see, that's where that electronics comes in and computers and i haven't even really touched computers and stuff but no i've learned negative to positive for car batteries and electronics yes in that end yes. so yeah negative to positive it because i noticed that uh i guess that uh ministro gaming just say you always learn negative to positive and that's how i learned charge batteries and such H hello mike negative to positive we're just doing a test right now uh, on uh, on the uh, live studio from uh, restream.io, trying yeah. to figure out if, if I like this software or not. 
I'm so used to uh, using OBS, but it seems like this is pretty rock solid. The nice thing or the neat thing about this is that it's in the browser. There's actually no software for this at all. Um, I was going to buy a copy of, uh, of Zoom, and I may still try Zoom. Um, you know, but the thing is, is that I'm, gonna, I'm just going to try stuff. Okay. Can and I give I'm, you a suggestion? And I'm still, I'm still, might even look at other broadcasting softwares too. I think look at, don't knock StreamYard out because StreamYard has oh, now gone to 1080p. Yes. And has also now added in up, you can have up to 10 people in the room. Yes. At one time yes. while streaming. So that's another service that you can use. And yeah. No, I don't I'm having pricing. Um, if I remember correctly, StreamYards allows you to stream to both devices mm -hmm. also. So you do have that option too. Yeah. Um, that's what's being used on uh, on the Saturday night, uh, Simply Wooden Creations, Let's Talk Shop shop with Russ. Um, and, uh, and, and it's pretty good. The chat bot, the chat bot's what's a little bit goofy. Um, I like the way it's doing the chat right now. I really like that. Dancing in the browser, working at all. Yeah, exactly. In a sense, uh, there really is something that moves from positive to negative while the electrons are moving the other way, the holes that the electron leaves behind. Yeah, as it moves towards positive charge. Yeah, but the holes never move, really. I mean, that's in my mind, that's how I see it. The holes never move. It's the electrons that change, yeah. Yeah. change from, from, you know, that move, you know, uh, yeah, see, so that's why. Uh, 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 that explains a lot about my dating life. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, that's that's so wrong. <laughs> Go from positive to negative in what milliseconds? <laughs> yeah, I, I think I will not pursue that path. <laughs> A good one, Luana. Good one. Hey, but you got to remember, it, it always takes the path of less resistance. Right? Right? <laughs> it does. Yeah, current does always take the path of least resistance, yes. Yes. And, and, and in uh, parallel circuits and in uh, combination circuits, uh, that, that's, you know, yeah, there's more. Are you going to go in serial or parallel, or are you going to even get more in-depth of the serial and parallel? No, we do, we do serial first. Then we do parallel. Then we do combination circuits. Okay. Which is serial and parallel. Yeah, and combination circuits I haven't got into yet. That's in our advanced course for the yeah. for our study for. Our but course. but the the point is that there's less resistance flowing. I mean, there's net less current flowing through the circuits that have more resistance. So the current in a in a combination circuit flows more through the the parallel side that has less resistance so there's actually more current flowing through there so that's kind of you know current takes the path of least resistance i mean that's the that's the thing oh man that was funny or line uh damn it skippy that's my ex did stop working altogether <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh that's the uh, that, luana yeah. <laughs> but Anyway, that's kind of, that's kind of, a, uh, Dan, I'd love to see, and I, I'm looking at the, at the message there on YouTube. If you're still out there, I don't know if you left or not, but yeah, I'd love to see those books. Um, that'd be really cool. Um, yeah, I say he's going to message you, I think, offline. Okay, right? good. Yeah. good. Um, so you might get it like a private chat or something like that inside um, YouTube. Somewhere, I guess. Good old. Uh, I, no, it might be a whisper. I'm gonna, know. I'm gonna messy. There's three sums up. There's five watching. And see, that's something else too. There's more. There's more people on YouTube. And I haven't been. I haven't been putting videos on YouTube very much, if if any. Uh, well, at we're least, gonna start changing that around. You know. At least of interest. Yeah, exactly. Um, but uh, but I think there's more people over there too. But, but I still don't want to – I'm not letting go of Twitch. I just, you know. You know what we need to do? We need to pull in that Twitch that Twitch clip I did a couple of weeks back. 
I got well, last week. I think it was that you kind well, of said something. If, if you want to find it, I'll I'll let them see it. Uh, let's see. Uh, how do I find my clips? I've clipped. Uh, I gotta go on my channel. Go and create. Al, I told him you wanted them, and he posted. But he, okay, I, I see. Oh, posted uh, would get back with you on where to send them. Um, okay. See you later, Jim. Hey, man, thanks for stopping by. Um, this is for you, Jim. Jim's a really good guy. Uh, so what does your class on IoT talk about? Mac, it, uh, it talks about getting the Arduino going. It, it talks about putting an operating system on the Raspberry Pi, which, which is probably the hardest thing for students to grasp. Um, and then there is one lab in there that connects the Arduino with the Raspberry Pi. So you can actually turn a potentiometer on, on the Arduino and the Raspberry Pi is displaying, um, a, you know, whatever. I mean, a graph up and down, lights. I, th I think that's what I did is, is lights um, in, in, in sequence. Um, uh, Jim, don't worry, arigato. Um, but uh, it's through the Cisco Academy curriculum. So it's, it's, official, it's official curriculum from the Cisco Academy. Um, I finally... I finally um, got all four of the of the uh, version six CCNA classes accredited for, and uh, and and I've been teaching them now for probably five years, at least the ones that I was an, uh, accredited on, and they've changed the, uh, the the CCNA to where instead of it being two tests now, it's only one, one, uh, and now it's only three classes, but uh, but we've kind of added in there also that. Uh, that Internet of Things class, which is actually a special topics class. Um, let's, let me see if I can find it. I'll give you a, give you a tour of it. I don't know if I want to cut you guys off. I'm going to put it over here. Let me see. I hope everybody is doing well with all this virus and and stuff. Uh, we uh, we decided that, or the college decided to take precautions, temperature checks, and and uh, uh, social distancing, and we split some of the classes and and disinfecting and such. And um, I'll be I'll be starting back in the classroom for this for this class or for the class that I was planning on on streaming. Um, on Tuesday for labs, of course, fully masked and everything. So, let's see. Yeah, special topics and computers. This is the one I took to a credit. And I know you guys can't see this. I'm just trying to get it to a point where I can show you guys. You can pass all the passwords and stuff. But um, no, this is the one that I taught. <laughs> let me uh, let me share my screen. And there it is there. Found it. Okay. Give, give me a second, Ron. Hang, hang tight with it. Um, so this is the, uh, the IoT class. Okay. Um, and uh, the different, the different uh, topics. And there's a, a deal called Packet Tracer where simulations take place and stuff. But uh, it's the introduction to the course and things and connections, sensors, actuators, and microcontrollers. Then this is the software part of it. Net fog and cloud computing and digitization uh, of business, IoT applications and business, and create an IoT. And create an IoT uses uh, um, if this, then that. Um, and I think somewhere in the middle, somewhere in here is where, is where that... Uh, 
I, I, I don't remember exactly where it's at. Where the where the interface between the um, the Arduino and the and the Raspberry Pi come in. And yes, Luana, I, I was talking uh, Raspberry Pi, not as in what you eat, as in as in the the micro uh, controller. Now, if I can figure out how to turn the screen sharing off, we're back now. Let me go find Ron's clip. <laughs> you remember, you'll remember the clip when you see it. Oh, I'm sure. I, th I think I remember it. Yeah. All right. Let me let me, let me turn it on. So it won't let me post it to the chat. Let me pause it. Let me make it big. Let's see. It's on Twitch, right? Let me turn it on. Oh yeah, I remember it. Wait, wait. wait. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember it now. All right, but since since you just have to, just have to, <laughs> have to uh, uh, I, I guess it's what I get for for. Uh, for we warned you. <laughs> oh wait, wait, wait. Where is uh, where is my browser? There it is. Okay. There's the. No, that's YouTube. There's so many windows open right now. It just gets confusing. Maybe it's because I maximized it on my end. If I disconnect, you'll know I hit the wrong button, right? No, that's not it either. Facebook Live. Nope, don't want that. Sanix. Instagram. Maybe it was here. I know it's just hiding. Yeah, it is. It's hiding because um, because it was in the same browser. That's something I'm not really liking. If if uh, uh, yeah, you can. In fact, at the Fab Lab, which is the fabrication lab or maker space up there, they've got a cabinet with uh, with a Raspberry Pi. I'm pretty certain it's a Raspberry Pi. I don't know. It might, might be a computer, but but I've seen them to where arcade games or, or, or arcade cabinets are made that way. All right, so there is the camera. There is the screen I'm sharing. Now I have to share it, which means that I do that. There it is. Um, I'm just trying to see if I see Ron. I don't see Ron. I'm That's still here. Yeah, yeah, I see you there, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out. Oh, we're at the bottom there. There yeah. you go. That's what I was trying to do. I was trying to maximize it but yet have both of us there so this is this is ron's uh, contribution to the stream i guess Come on. or just an idea of what you can expect when you watch them yeah <laughs> oh i don't think the audio is going to pass through though yeah the volume is not up yeah here we go so let me turn this down want to see boxes no 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 right Batman. I know this is TMI, but uh, Batman, it's uh, tidy whities not boxers. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's our type of sense of humor, right? Yeah. <laughs> right? Don't want to see boxers. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. yeah, maybe I shouldn't have put that on there, Ron. <laughs> so I can also do this. Great for life. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm scarred too. I can also do this. I know this is TMI, but uh, Batman, it's uh, tidy whities not boxers. <laughs> so, so Mac, where'd you, uh, where'd you get the uh, the the images or or the ROMs or or I, I don't know what they're called for the Raspberry Pi, but uh, uh, basically they're ROMs is what he's been doing. ROMs, okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you've answered that. I run a lot of games on the Raspberry Pi myself. So wow, I reached a hundred messages today. Channels. Okay, I gotta fix my friend's list. Oh man, this is messed up. So did I just get? What did I get? Okay, I got something. I got a. I got a tweak. Don't know what I got. But... No. Anyway. Okay. Um. Yeah, so uh, all these windows. All right. Okay. And I guess I can get rid of that. That one's gone. Hey, that's me. Hi. Stop sharing my screen. 
we're back to where we were. Can can this be? See, that makes Ron big. That makes Ron. Ah, big. So scaring people. Both of those, but see, both of those do the same thing at this. Oh no. Okay. This right here allows me to to be the, the little small box, and if I do that, one, gaming. It have flips. fun. See you later, Mac. Have a nice one, man. And see, night, guys. Yeah, man. Thanks for stopping by, man. Stop by more. I haven't seen you in a, in, a, in a long time. So I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to do this. Yeah, yeah, Luana. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to do this because so far I haven't done any of the content. And, and I haven't done, obviously, a video. Um, because you know we're trying it out, we're checking it out, we're trying to trying to figure this out and 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 play with it. Um, I'm just trying to see. I plug this thing in, and uh, yeah, that's Twitch. Let me go over to YouTube. I'm, I'm just trying to set myself back up over there since there. There's YouTube and there's Twitch. Okay. I'm just trying to look at the at the stats and see what all's happening over there. So where is this? Yeah, I can't, I can't I can't see the whole the whole screen okay now I can't okay I just want to see how many were over there and there's three which which is fine which is perfectly fine um because I, I can definitely tell that I'm gonna have to uh, to cut the video up when I do stream it I just don't know if this is gonna work for me the way I really was intending for it to work. The question is, were you seeing the screen switching, Luana? Okay, now how do I get rid of... I think she said screen switching was fun to watch. She says yes. Yeah, huh. Uh, so, so how do I get... How do I fix this? How do I get that comment to go away. Oh, hide message from the stream. There we go. See, it was way up at the top. Um, see, we can we can do graphics, which are... Okay. Could you hear me when, when that was going on, Ron? No. I don't know if they could hear me either. No, I... Yeah, I could not hear you. There's a setup for titles. This is, and I'm just going to put title just to see. Oh, I, I think I know what that is. Yeah, that sends it out to Twitch. Yeah, that does. Because there's also a streaming service called Picarto, which I, I was just, I think, at one point in time uh, going to different streams. And there's also one called Smashcast. And there's bunches of others, but those are the four that I've actually got accounts on. Yeah, but what we're asking is, could you hear us talking when the title screen popped up when it went into countdown mode? Yeah, I bet they couldn't. It was doing a countdown, so I guess she said, "Yeah, I can." Yes, can hear. It was doing a countdown. If that helps. Yeah, yeah, the countdown. Yes, yeah, you could hear the countdown, but could you hear us talking behind the the countdown, or me counting or talking behind the countdown? That that's really the question. I don't think so because I think I think Russ Luana uses uses a restream also, and uh, mm -hmm. could not hear you during yeah the count. Oh yeah, Michael. Okay, but that's what I thought because he basically I don't know if he mutes everybody. He tells everybody to mute themselves, but but apparently we don't need to mute ourselves. I think he uses the client, whereas this is the uh, the web version of it. Oh boy. So let me let me try to let me try to get some content put together. Let's see, and turn this off. Let me bring. 
There it is. Okay, that's why I couldn't find figure out how to do that. What's that, Ron? I am right now playing with um, a version of a code plug right now. And I'm learning it right now, how, how it all works all together. A code what? Code plug. Uh, code plug is programming for DMR radios. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, there's my there's my store and go. Let me go to DCAC. So there's numbers info sheet. See, I've taught this class several times, but I've had to recreate the 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 shell and blackboard. And maybe that's what I'm going to need to do. Or maybe beforehand, set up the documents. Well, I, I know that in Blackboard, I've got them set up. Let me bring up Blackboard. And then I think I'll just go off that. Because I've got them put in a folder or in a module. And that's how I was intending to, to, to do the uh, lecture. So let me go to coursework. Let's go to module one and numbers. So, and I'm going to, I need to mute Discord. I wish there was a way to mute Discord. I'm sure there is for a bit. Let me see, right click. No, I think it's the server. That I'm need to mute, mute, mute server. Yeah, yeah, because I, I added a new server today. All right, so that's muted. Um, let me share my screen, which is that one. Share. Make it big. Of course, we can. Show us. Um, Ron, do you mind if I don't show you, Ron? That's okay. You don't have to show me. Because, you know, like, like I'm saying, I'm going to take, but, but is it possible? If I do that, you, I can't hear you, which I'm not really too happy about that. If I do that, I see you. If I do that, that's the screen. And then we're both done. But obviously, there isn't a way to just so no way to keep me in the video without having me on live stream hmm. right and i just i just lost you for some reason yeah See? i turned off my video oh yeah but but that not the yeah no i want to see what it would do if it would just minimize my if it just take my video off of it completely yeah yeah there's no way to hear us unless you have us in the video so right and then there's and then there's that. yeah exactly exactly and then there's that but the the format I'm going to want to use is that format whether whether it's the student and, and the instructor and maybe all the students um, and I, I think that's the format I need to do so I'm not going to do the syllabus because I have the syllabus I'm going to look info ohmmeter and I'm basically just going to talk about the documents. Um, let me do it. Maximize this. How well can you see that, guys? It's a little blurry on my end, but is it? that's also because the screen is smaller on my end. So I'm trying to to make this bigger. Is there? See, Reese from Rao, stop sharing. Yeah, it's not going to let me zoom in. I was hoping I could zoom in. Oh, duh. Duh. So, yeah, so so this this would work. This would work. Um, yeah, so the first thing I'm going to do is talk about meters. And there's basically various different meters that check voltage, current, and resistance. And they're called multimeters. And, uh, you know, because of that reason, because they, they check multiple things. Even though you have to set up each meter differently, there's a, a common setup procedure for some. And you can see some meters over here. This one right here, this red one, this is a, uh, uh, a Harbor Freight cheapo meter. 
then I probably have five, six, seven of these things. Um, they're probably five, six dollars. They do, they're not the most precision meter in the world, but actually for the, for the DC AC circuits, they measure milliamps better than some of the, the, the higher price hundred dollar meters, even fluke meters. I've had some, some oil fuel, uh, students come in using their, their $700 fluke meters that wouldn't measure that small a current. So what I recommend is that anybody that, that takes the DCAC class, and you can use whatever meter you want, but the, the red uh, Harbor Freight meters, at one time you could you get a little coupon to get a free meter too, in fact. So those are, those are all different types of meters, basically the same multimeter. Uh, whoa, I guess that wasn't the way to do that. Oh, I know why. I know why. Because I've got the wrong mouse in here. Now, let me, let me change. Yeah, I have, I've just got two, two ports up here, and I have to take and disconnect my mouse, but I have another mouse hooked up that the scroll bar or the scroll wheel doesn't work too well, and that's that's it right there. So that's what just happened. Um, so got my other meter here. No, that's not the meter. I mean, uh, uh, mouse. This is the mouse. And see, there's even there's even another mouse. <laughs> Quick, get the mouse traps. Um, so let me scroll over. Maybe uh, there we go. There we go. Uh, um, so ports. So a port is where a connection is made with the meter. You can put the leads in there. And I guess I could, hey, look at this. There's there's one of the red ones, right? So you, you plug, I'll just read it. So a meter has two leads, a red and, and a black one. Can, can you imagine what they're for, right? This is the positive lead and this is the negative lead. Red is a uh, is positive and black obviously is negative and they usually plug in to different to different spots as as you can see there so the black lead is inserted in the it's labeled com or common and the black lead would be plugged into the middle port here if uh, if you wanted to measure voltage ohms in this case capacitance because i guess this meter frequency milliamps or temperature you'd plug the red meter into into that other port. Now, if you're measuring amperage at amps, which is which is high high amperage, you would plug the red one into the into that other port. And this, this one has the same, the same setup. You can you can see here where I, I can't see the screen, but um, you can see where it says volt amp, just just the same as that, and then common, and then up here says five. So it says five volts AC, ADC, five amps maximum. So this one will handle five amps. That one up there that we're showing, it'll do 10. But, but the point is, is that you can you can unplug it and then plug it in. And now you can you can test a little, a little bit higher current that way. Um, so let's scroll down a little bit. So meter function, so on the meter ports shown here, the black lead would plug into the COM port, which is what we said. The red lead would plug into the uh, connection. A is for amperage. The, the micro, milliamp, or temp, which is for microamps, milliamps, or temperature, that's where this port would go, which is right here on this one. So this one's got a fourth, a fourth port, whereas those have three. Then, then volt ohm hertz for volts, ohms, or frequency would go would go in this one. So, you know, it varies from meter to meter, but uh, but that's why they have the different ones because it changes the circuits as you're connecting it to the meter. So you can take different readings. So your meter, it's very important that you understand the settings on the meter. If, if, if you don't connect it properly, you do let the smoke out. And um, I have done that. Uh, I'll just tell on myself and say that when I've had the meter in resistance mode, and, and we'll go over the different settings on the meter, and I get and gone to check 12 volts, a battery on a, on a car, and I checked it. For some reason, this complained and let some smoke out. 
and blew a fuse. I, I don't remember if I actually fried the meter, but, uh, but it, it didn't like it. Um, and, and because these are so inexpensive, it's not a big deal. Actually, the more expensive meters probably have better protection than this does. So if you if you did do that with high expensive meter, it would probably blow a fuse instead of blowing up the meter. And and yeah, it did blow up the meter. I, I remember it did it did blow the meter up. Boom, but inside there was there was a broken clad. Um, Okay, um, so it is very important that you understand the settings on the meter. If the meter is not connected properly, it will blow up or it imaged or you'll blow a fuse. So in, in, in electronics, there's, there's uh, conductors and insulators. An insulator is a material that basically doesn't allow any current flow to flow. Uh, some good insulators are plastic, wood, and air. Air is a, a good insulator, although uh, if, if the voltage is high enough, it will go through uh, and, and jump to the other side. I mean, think about it this way. Air, right, is, is, is in the air, but we see lightning bolts coming down, right? So, but traditionally, air is an insulator. Uh, plastic is a really good insulator. Rubber is an even better insulator. Um, wood, in, in the old, it used to be, um, I don't know if you guys remember, but there used to be canes hanging on the wall in case somebody got stuck or electrocuted. You would take and you would yank them and pull them off the, the device. At least that's how I remember it. And I'm sticking to it. So, but anyway, so a conductor is a material that allows electro electrical current the flow. Uh, most metals are, are conductors. Uh, body, guess what? It's also a conductor. Um, the most common conductor is copper. Uh, and I say the most common, it's not the best conductor, but it's the most common. That's what most of our wires are. Uh, there's also aluminum wires. Um, and in special situations, gold is also used. Um, and I'm trying to think if there's other metals like silver used. I don't, I don't really know off the top of my head, but um, there are other metals that are used uh, that have different properties and stuff, but that's not the point. For wiring, copper is the most common uh, conductor. And as you can see right here, here's a, here's a copper with, with insulation. Hey, that's plastic insulation, isn't it? Um, yeah. So... An ohm meter is basically uh, a meter that reads resistor that tells you how much resistance. So it's an electrical term used to describe how how poor electrical current flows, and that's and that's resistance. By the way, we're talking about an ohm meter, and ohm meter is used to measure that resistance. So resistance is the opposition to the flow of electrons, and resistance is. Um, I wish I had a resistor in front of me, and I probably do somewhere on here. Um, I didn't even think about having props like that. I know I've got a little box with some components in it, but I'm sure we'll find it. Uh, I'm going to edit this video anyway, right? Is there any electronics in No, no, these are, these are parts. Good. Let me see if there might be some resistors in here. Resistor looks like 
like that right there. Let me move this. Let's see. Yeah, resistor looks like that right there. In fact, I'm sure if I did that, you know, that, that right there is a resistor. And it's basically um, uh, kind of like a little carbon in there and it has uh, a resistance factor and, and that's that's measured in ohms. So that's that's a resistor. All right, back to back to the screen. Did I lose my sharing? Yes, I did. Back to that. Let's share the screen. Okay, so <clears throat> so going back to resistance, let, let, let's go back to the ohmmeter. So an ohmmeter is used to measure resistance. In fact, I'm going to start all over again. An ohmmeter, talking about an ohmmeter, an ohmmeter measures ohms. Resistance is the electrical term used to describe how well or poor electrical current will flow. An ohmmeter is used to measure low resistance. <clears throat> Excuse me. Low resistance, a conductor such as copper wire has low resistance. It, it, it doesn't have opposition to the flow of, of electrons. Copper wire has little resistance to electrical flow. That's why we use copper wires in, in our wiring. High resistance is an insulator. And like plastic or, or the, the insulation on that wire so that the current won't, won't flow through it. So the way we measure it is, is in, uh, in ohms. Resistance is measured in ohms. The symbol for, for the, the word ohms is the omega. The value displayed on the digital meter is the value called ohms. So zero ohms is when an ohmmeter displays zero. It indicates that there's no resistance uh, to, to the, the current flow or the current flow, uh, current flow through it, you know, flows easily. Uh, a copper wire has low resistance. There's still some resistance, but it's low resistance. Therefore, the ohmmeter will play a low number or it'll display zero um, or a number real close to zero. Um, and uh, if there's, if there's with with low resistance between one point, say one point in the wire and another point, that continuity. You, you, you have, you can connect basically between. Uh, if you have a setting of infinite ohms, sometimes it'll show an OL for overload on here or, um, or just, just a, a, an overload condition. Um, that means that it's a maximum value that the meter will display because you can change the settings on on the, on the meter if you're you're measuring on say uh, a 20k uh, range because you can move it versus a 200k resistance and the resistance between both of them and you've got it in the lower one well it can't display that high so it'll just tell you overload or or infinite ohms even though it may not be infinite ohms um, Basically, any value uh, than what can be displayed or interpreted with the ohm meter uh, is displayed normally as, as infinite ohms or greater value than than two million ohms. This one will. This one is is uh, two thousand k ohms, and if it's two thousand k ohms, it's two million ohms, right? Because if we take a, a k is three zeros. If we take and put 2,000 followed by three zeros, that's two zero 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 zero, which is 2 million ohms. If the ohmmeter isn't capable of displaying the very high value resistance, a special symbol will normally be placed. Some meters, like it says, an OL is displayed, okay, which indicates that there's no path for the electrical current to flow. Or it's an overload or... Trying to get this to where you can see the whole thing. Come on. 
on, come on, come on, come on. Okay, so right there, okay, in figure one, the meter is set up as an ohmmeter. Um, the black lead, which is right there, is hooked up to the common. Uh, the red lead is hooked up to the ohm port. Okay, when the leads are touched together, right, right there, is what it's showing us there, it, uh, the meter displays zero, in this case, 0, 0.00. .00. Um, this indicates that between the two meter leads, there is zero ohms uh, resistance. Uh, again, continuity. In figure two, the meter is, is set to the speaker symbol. Some ohmmeters have a speaker. Now, I'll show you that. Well, I guess I could just move it down. So note, in figure two, the meter is set to the speaker symbol. Some ohmmeters have a speaker. Anytime there's zero ohms of resistance, the meter beeps. It's really a nice feature because, you know, I've been using this word, you know, continuity. When, when you test it, it tells you, hey, there's a complete path between both those leads. So you could be checking a wire over on this end and over on this end, and it'll beep. Well, you can, you can maybe look over there and maybe over there, but you can't look at the meter and over there and over there, right? You can only really look at one place. So when it beeps, it says, you've, you've got zero ohms or continuity. It's a little bit smaller. So in figure three, the black and red lead are not touching, as, as you can see right there. The meter is displaying OL, or overload. Um, this indicates that there's no path for electrical current. It is actually trying to read the resistance of the air. Well, that's what it do. It's trying to read the resistance of the air, right? Air has, has really high resistance. What's the meter set on? 100. So, you know, it's not 200 ohms. I don't know what the resistance of the air is right now, but um, it, and it's probably not even 2 million ohms, which is what the, the 2M is. So whether or not the meter can read it, if the leads are like this, it, chances are it's going to read that, uh, that it, you know, it has no resistance, basically, or infinite resistance, excuse me, not no resistance, because that would be zero, infinite resistance or an overload condition on the meter. And like it says here, uh, the display OL indicates an open circuit. Now, an open circuit is, is an infinite resistance, let's say. Whereas, we'll go back here, whereas a closed circuit is, is zero resistance. And this technically is called a short, and this is called an open. If, if a circuit shorts out, out, you know, two things touch together and, and they've got continuity, whether or not they should have it or not. And open, obviously, is, is, is an open path and, you know, open leads. Um, so let's look at figure five. Figure five, a switch controls the lamp. The lamp isn't working and the switch needs to be checked. The switch can be checked with the ohm meter. Note, do not use a ohm meter on Live circuit. Remember, I was talking about you know checking uh, the battery with a ohm meter and it blew up the the uh, the meter. So circuit voltages can damage or destroy a meter. Um, now I'm sure you out there will 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 know how to how to check this, but um, let's see if it goes on. So so by removing the switch from the circuit, I'm taking it out of the circuit. Sometimes it's just as simple as cutting one end. Maybe not not necessarily taking it completely off, but, and then of course turning the power off. So by removing the switch from the circuit, and no meter can be used to verify the operation of the switch. Figure seven illustrates the correct operation of the switch. It is off, the two terminals are disconnected, and then when the switch is on, the two terminals are connected. So this is off. In other words, the switch opens the circuit or the path, and when it's on, it closes the circuit. So we could, we could, in essence, um, in figure nine, black and red leads of the ohmmeter are connected to the switch. The switch is turned off to the off position. And as you can see, in the off position, it's open. The ohmmeter displays or verifies that there's no path uh, for, for electrical current. So it shows an overload. It does not show continuity in, in, in uh, 
In contrast, uh, in figure 11, the switch is turned to the on position. The meter displays zero, zero. That's because there's, there's continuity. You guessed it, right? It, indicating that the path for electrical current, there is a, a path for electrical current through the switch. Uh, the display is actually indicating that there is 0, 0.0 ohms uh, of resistance between the two meter leads. If the meter has a beep setting, the meter will beep if the switch is good and it's turned on. And sometimes what you can do is you can uh, put some, uh, let me see if I can, if I can get this. Maybe. Because it's because we're live and when we're live nothing works the way it's supposed to work so sometimes what always I'll the do, case huh? it's not always the case <laughs> that is always the case so what I'll do sometimes is is I'll take I'll take one of the leads with uh, an alligator clip plug it into a circuit say a switch right and a switch, and this isn't a switch. I wonder if I got a switch in here. I, I don't think I do. Yeah, hey, I got to drop off anyway. So you bet, man. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night. And uh, like I said, I'll probably I'll probably edit all this up and and uh, just upload it as a video. Um, I'm sure I've got a switch somewhere. I just need to get organized. Since I haven't ever done this like this, it's kind of all, all over the place. But so the point with this here, though, is so the point is is if we, if we have a switch and we put on one lead or, or on both leads and then toggle the switch back and forth, we can see it. If it beeps, the ohmmeter will beep. Or if you switch it back and forth, you can actually see it go from, from an overload or from, from, from a 0, 0.0 to an open uh, and back and forth. That tells you the switch is good. So that's, that's one way to check the switch. Um, let me check something out here because I apologize. I apologize for not checking the the uh, the chat, Luana. I, I see you're still out there. Um, let me let me see if I can catch up a little bit. Yeah, it's pretty small, huh, huh Michael? Um, I'll just kind of give you guys a little little look over. Fluke knockoff. Flukes are really nice, by the way. Uh, very, very nice. Um, you know, I didn't check this on YouTube. Yeah, it's it's BS on YouTube. That's that's as big, I think, as it's going to get. To be honest with, yeah, and. I see what you're saying. Yeah, to, to switch back and forth, Luana, I, I see. Yeah, that, that would be something, but I don't even have a switch handy, you know. But, uh, yeah, I see what you're saying. Didn't even think about that. Um, and, you know, th this is this is something, Luana, that with OBS, I will usually have a camera, and, and I might be able to do this. I don't think this software will allow me to do this. Again, this I started to check this out to try it out and stuff to see what I like, what I don't like. I may actually go back to OBS because I can have multiple cameras and I can have one camera looking at at the switch at, at my hands, you know, like like you're used to seeing pretty much. While maybe I'll be displaying the you know the the, the lecture information. So. But, uh, but, but, but I understand what you're saying, and that, that's a very good suggestion. So let's, let's go back. Let's go back to, to where we were. Um, yeah, so, so I'm just going to go back because I might, I might actually change this around a bit, a bit. So in figure 11, the switch is turned to the on position. The meter displays 0.0, .0 indicating that there is a path for electrical current to flow through, or like I say, continuity. The display is actually indicating there is 0, 0.0 ohms of resistance between those two points. Um,
the displays actually indicating that there is 0, 0.0 ohms of resistance between the two meter leads. If your meter has a beep setting, the meter will beep if the switch is good and it is turned on. So trade expressions, the term ohms out is slang or is a slang term used for checking items such as a switch. In other words, a fuse, etc. An electrician might say to you, ohm out that switch to see if it's any good. Yeah, so if I ohm something out, I'm basically checking the resistance. Like I've been saying, continuity is the term that comes from the word continuous. If a switch is turned to its on position, it would have continuity. An electrician checking to see if a wire is broken would say, I checked the continuity of the wire. In other words, it is not broken anywhere, it is continuous. Uh, resistance is measured in ohms. The symbol for ohms is omega, range from about 0 to 2 million ohms, or 2 mega ohms, and we'll talk about uh, that later on, but 2 million ohms. The ohmmeter has multiple uses, a vital tool for the electrician or technician. The use of an ohmmeter is an important skill to, select, to develop. The use of an ohmmeter is an important skill to develop. And, and actually, an ohmmeter is how you check circuits. Uh, a DVOM, a digital ohm volt meter, which what this is, um, is one of the things, one of the go-to tools, basically, one of them, uh, of, of an electrician, of an electronics technician, of a um, heck of a computer technician, I've used it a lot to check power supplies on, on computers. So basically, that right there concludes, um, what was it called? <laughs> what was the lecture called? Call it class one. So that concludes class one, where we're talking about the uh, ohm meter. Thank you. All right. So let me see what else. Uh, you know, I, let's see. New messages. Thanks, Luana. You know what's really hard is the fact that, you know, I'm, I'm reading... I'm reading the information, okay? I'm usually standing in front of a class and people ask questions and, and there's there's something about not getting any, you know, any feedback. And you know, that's why I put the uh, chat bot out when I'm out in, in the shop because I get feedback without having to look over at the chat, you know, um, but I appreciate it, very, very kind. Um, let's see. I'm just needing series and resistance lesson questions. Well, this one needed to be to be talked about anyway. So, um, close that out. Yeah, I guess so. Um, there is a lab that, yeah, there's a lab that, that we will go over when you're in class. Let me start over. There's a lab that we'll go over when we go into class, and the purpose is to identify a set of procedures of an ohmmeter. Uh, and basically what you'll do is you'll set up the meter to be used as an ohmmeter. I'll verify the meter is set up properly. The meter should display zero, and then when you touch the leads together, it'll be OL. Uh, using a, a switch, which I'll supply at, at the lab, um, you basically check it with an ohm meter, and you tell me how many ohms of resistance that, uh, that, that switch has when you turn it on and off. The next part, and I'm just going to go through this. We may do it differently in, in class. We're going to cut eight. Eight wires, two feet in length. We're going to strip the insulation from each end. We're going to twist all the wires together, and we're going to leave about two inches uh, untwisted on each end. And then, using electrical tape, we're going to uh, uh, to leave everything but the the end untaped. And then we're going to 
going to connect each to terminal block, and it's actually already been done, to be honest with you, already been collected to the, connected to the terminal block. And then using a, a, an ohmmeter, we're going to identify the ends of the connectors, and that'll be practice for checking continuity. Um, so using an ohmmeter, we're going to connect eight conductors end to end, create one conductor, and then I'll, I'll, uh, I'll check the, the connections. So, so that's one lab. All right, let's talk about numbers. And I'm sure everyone knows what numbers are, but in electronics, I'm sure everybody knows what numbers are. In electronics, though, numbers basically define all the readings that we take. So here's some conversions. So how far is it from Odessa to Midland? Well, it's approximately 1,267,200 inches from Odessa to Midland. That is the accurate answer, OK? But it's in form that's not typically used in everyday language. Uh, we normally would say, hey, it's 200 miles. And that conversion is made for our brains to, to kind of understand a little better uh, for, for the, the human convenience. Um, in electrical values, um, many electrical values are very large and some are very small. So it, it wouldn't be unusual to see a current value of 0 0.003 amps or a resistor value of 35,000 ohms. These large and small numbers are typically converted and expressed in a way that's basically convenient for humans. So for large values, we use what's called a kilo or K. Uh, the, the price of a new pickup is $47,000. The salesman, <clears throat> excuse me, <coughs> oh, excuse, and I probably should have muted it out so I wouldn't blow your eardrums out, but there's feedback, huh? Um, you know, I wonder, in fact, if it was when I was looking at this stuff, uh, feedback or echo? Luana, that's off. That's actually off too. I do have three. I have two YouTubes. I'm going to kill this one because that's, yeah, I'm going to kill this one. What type of feedback, Luana? Maybe, maybe I'm looking at a different, at a different chat. Okay. Because um, I see it. it the last one says that's a comments are read to you. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. Where did I just see that? Anyway, no, 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 no worries. Let me make sure I didn't turn it back on. With, with the, uh, the software, there isn't... I don't see the chat anymore because I see, oh, I know why. Yeah. YouTube. There's feedback on YouTube, huh? The feedback's still there? The sound chat, there's feedback. You didn't hear what you were saying. Oh, I got you. I got you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, now, now I'm looking at the dual chat. For both Twitch and and YouTube, um, okay. Oh wow! I just realized it's showing this. Is it that one? Yeah. So yeah, I don't really need those other browsers open. I'm just going to go ahead and turn them off. They were on because we were doing the the tests. I'm just going to close YouTube out totally. I'm going to leave my client running that also has my message bar on both sides. Yes, yes, definitely. And see, that's one of the things I was I was thinking about doing, you know, if students were to come in or really anybody if they came in, it, 
wouldn't really be a big deal. The professional thing to do, Luana, is have something in my ear to where I'm hearing the speech bot talking to me every time somebody says something and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't, you don't hear it in the stream. Like out in the shop, yeah, because I'm not there, but I could use a Bluetooth headset, you know, or, you know, uh, earbuds and nobody would hear it either. And I probably have been more lazy in doing that out there uh, than, than what I probably should have. But that might be one way to get around that feedback because I do want feedback, especially if there's actual students from the class that are out in the chat, you know, because anywho it is and the speech bot, you know, works for YouTube also. So um, but anyway, OK, back to, back to this. So I'm just going to go to the large values again and and, uh, and and pick up from there. So large values, kilo or K. The problem pickup is $47,000. A car salesman might tell you that uh, the pickup sells for forty-seven k. I mean, we know this from everyday stuff. I mean, we, we use it all the time. Um, it's also used in electronics. Of course, this is the same amount, but you notice what was done. The K was just substituted for 1000 The value is same. It's just expressed in a different form. You may not even realize that you're using the formula to convert them. So you automatically perform the formula. The value divided by a thousand is equal to blank K. 40,000 divided by a thousand equals 40K. Well, I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. I've had people tell me that too. And, and you know, it's, it's funny because in my mess over here, I know I've got a a Bluetooth headset over there that I might actually start using, but then I got to keep it charged, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it's, it's a, it's another, it's another thing here. I could probably hook up, you know, a uh, wired one and that would take care of it for sure. In the shop, it would definitely have to be uh, Bluetooth. So the K was added after the actual value was divided by a thousand. If the K was not added, the value of the pickup would be misinterpreted as $47 instead of $47,000. Uh, to convert the value from K to an actual value, you automatically use the formula. Value in K sub X, a thousand or times a thousand is equal to the actual value. So 47 K times 1,000 equals 47. The K was removed after multiplying the value by 1,000. Um, the letter K is used for the term kilo. Kilo is from the Greek wool. Kilo. <laughs> I have no idea how that's pronounced. Literally a thousand. But you know, I am going to try to see if I can find a pronunciation from that. That is that is interesting. Yeah, that's a thousand, actually. And it's pronounced Chilio. In fact, listen. Helioi. 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 <laughs> Don't you love the internet? So, so kilo from the Greek kilio, literally a thousand, is a unit prefix in the metric system denoting multiplication by 1,000. It has been used in the uh, international system of units, where it is the unit uh, symbol K, lowercase, according to Wikipedia. And by the way, um, I also tell people that you move the decimal point. So if you have 47, and I, I'm going to try to do this, if you, you, you take 47 and you move the decimal point to the right, three or a thousand, 
three zeros. So that 47, when you move, when you move the 47, when you move that decimal point that's right there, three places over to the to the right. I guess that's the right. No, that's my left. But you're right. Anyway, it's easier on the board, guys. <laughs> um, maybe I maybe I won't even do it that way, but uh, because the other way it's to the other side. Anyway, anyway, to express a value in k value or to express a value from a k value, you multiply or you divide. This is where the decimal goes either left or right um, by a thousand as shown. So the actual value divided by 1,000, you add a k. If you have a k value, you multiply it by 1,000, and you get the actual value. So notice in the conversion that three zeros added or moved from the value for the result. For example, 47,000 or 47 zeros off k. Some other examples are... 17,000 equals 17K. 29 tw equals 29,000. 267,000 equals 267K. 82K equals 82,000. 45,400 equals 45.4K. And you can see, maybe I can show it here better. You can see where I'm taking... I'm taking the decimal and I'm moving it three places to the left. Yeah, see here, here I'm, I'm able to, to, to make this work instead of in the air and backwards. But if you take the decimal point and you move it three places to the left, that becomes a K, 45.4K. Same thing with, with, with this one. Well, it's K. Well, to get to the regular value, you move the decimal point to the right three places. So this one becomes 36.5K, becomes 36,500. And, and that's the same thing, Luana. Kilogram is exactly that. Um, it's a thousand grams is, is what it is. Um, yeah, kilo. Kilo, kilo, K, same, same, same thing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I don't know why you're saying oops, but you got that right. Yeah, kilogram, exactly. Um, mega, let me do this one. mega, or big M, right? Uh, another unit prefix uh, for a large value is mega, abbreviated big M. It's another term used for human convenience. You know, it could be big M or capital M. I, I guess capital M is probably uh, a better way of putting it. The value uh, 6 million is abbreviated 6 mega, large capital M. Um, any value to be expressed as mega is divided by, you guessed it, 1 million. Uh, any value to be expressed as mega must be multiplied by 1 million in order to identify the actual value. So, so 6 or 6 million divided by 1 million equals 6 m, 6 mega. 8 mega times 1 million equals 8 million. And if, if you notice like right here, whereas keel was 3, mega is 6, right? 1 with followed by, by 6 zeros. And again, to go from mega to the actual number, you move the decimal point because if it's 8.0 mega, then you move the decimal point six places to the right, and then that becomes 8 million. Notice on the conversions that six zeros are added or removed from the value for the result. For example, six million or six, seven mega it, you're you're just it's just another way of doing it by moving the decimal uh, point or place mega 
is, is a unit prefix in the metric system denoting a factor of 1 million. It was uh, confirmed for use in the International System of Units, SI, in 1960, where it was the unit symbol M in uppercase. And again, according to Wikipedia. Now, what about the small values? There are many electrical values that are small, 0 0.023 amps or 0 0.00001 farads. Um, is not an unusual electrical value. Like large values, small, small values also have unit prefixes assigned to them. Remember, prefixes are assigned to values for convenience. Milli. The time it takes to blink your eyes is 0 0.033 seconds. Or 0 0.033 seconds, which is 33 thousandths, thousandths of a second. Not thousand seconds, but thousandths of a second. Um, you know, one over a thousand. This value can be expressed in the term of milliseconds. Um, to convert 0 0.033 seconds into milliseconds, use the formula value times a thousand equals the millis. So 0 0.033 times a thousand equals 33 milliseconds. And if you notice here in making this conversion, we're moving this decimal point three places to the right. If we're going from a, the small value to the, to the, uh, to the, from the abbreviated, from the decimal value to the actual milliseconds, um, the, the point zero three three times a thousand equals 33 milliseconds. And it's, it's shown as 33 small m seconds. Uh, the, the small m, uh, it gives us the milli. As you can see up here, milli is a small m, whereas what, mega was, whereas mega was a big m. The same thing with kilo. Is there one for kilo? You bet you. Question is, is are they going to show that to us? Yeah, they are. They are. Okay, so... Duh, 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 duh. That, that's what we're talking about, milli. Yeah, yeah that's going to be cut out of the video. So, did I just... Okay, so to convert a milli expression back to its actual, use the formula, milli divided by 1,000 equals the value. So it's 33 milli divided by 1,000 equals 0 0.033. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Milliliters is one thousandth of a liter. Millimeters is one thousandth of a meter. Yeah, exactly. Cinematic equals Milliliters, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, I, th I think one's called. I want to say dry value. I, I, I don't remember exactly, but exactly, exactly. Yeah, we're not quite going to talk about conversions like that, but yeah, the the, the cubic centimeters, yeah. So is a cubic centimeter? I, I'm I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember. I, I know what you're what you're saying. I'm just trying to remember how to. Yeah, yeah. I remember watching. Um, I think it was a Navy. I don't remember what she was, but it was a Navy admiral, maybe. I don't remember her name, but she was talking about the different sizes and how they compared. And she was using things like, you know, pico is 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 the the uh, the pepper inside a little pepper uh, deal, and then she she made the the uh, uh, the nano and the and the and the micro and the mini, and then she showed different.
things in size and compared them to physical items in, in, the, in the world. So I'm just going to start over again. To convert a milli expression back to its actual value, use the formula milli divided by 1,000, which is equal to the value 33 milli divided by 1,000 equals 0 0.033. Now, 0 0.033 what? Well, whatever it was, if it's meters, if it's, if it's uh, you know, whatever, whatever that label is, is, is what it, that needs to be. So if it was um, seconds, then it would be 0 0.03 seconds. If it was, uh, you know, another label, then it would be that. I, I usually will, will say up in front of the class, Joanne, uh, Luana, um, well, what is it? Because they'll, they'll, they'll make the calculation, they'll say 0 0.033, and I say, well, 0 0.033 what? Goats? Sheep? And and it gets the point across. I don't know, is it is it meters? Is it, you know, whatever, seconds? Uh, so what is it? You're giving me a number, but what is the actual label on it? Uh, examples, 0.123 equals 123 milli meters, whatever. They're, they're not actually showing the label here, they're just doing the conversion. 0.43 equals 430 milli. 0 0.004 equals 4 milli. 235 milli equals 0 0.235. 500 milli equals 0 0.5. So see, 500 milli, if it's liters, that's 0 0.5 liters. 7 milli liters is equal to 0 0.007, whatever the extension is, or whatever the label is. Small values can be expressed by the term milli. Milli, symbol, small m, is a unit prefix in the metric system denoting a factor of one thousandth or 10 to the negative third. Adopted in 1795 where it has the symbol unit m in uppercase. Gee, that doesn't look right. Hmm. hmm. Adopted nice side where it has the unit symbol M. I think that's a misprint. That should be small m. Lowercase. That's interesting. Let's look back at here. Yeah, I think I think that's a misprint because mega is M in uppercase, whereas milli see right there is has the unit symbol m in lowercase yeah exactly in in medical you must always label yeah yeah exactly yep yep well i, I try to stress that also when i when i lecture because inevitably they'll come up with the calculation and i'm like well so what was it originally you know because uh, it could be seconds it could be Hertz, it could be, you know, centimeters, or no, no, I'm sorry, uh, meters, it could be meters, it could be, you know, all sorts of different labels. Yeah, it could be all sorts of different labels. Micro, shown by the, 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 uh, that U looking symbol, or I believe that is called a micro symbol. Uh, what is that called? Micro symbol, the Greek letter U, is that right? A symbol is a prefix for the metric system. One millionth micros, meaning small symbol prefix. Mu, mu, it's mu, the Greek letter mu. Yeah, that's what it is. You know, I have forgotten that, Luana. But I, I knew it was Mew, like a cat. Mew. All right, let's uh, let's go back. So micro, mu, a prefix. Did, did I just? Yeah, micro, mu, which is the symbol. Some electrical values are very small. A capacitor value may be as small as point zero 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 
0.001 farads. Now again, there's the label, farads. A unit prefix assigned to a number that indicates that it has been changed by a factor of 1 million is micro. The symbol for micro is the Greek letter mu. So for example, to express the number 0.000012 in the term micro, we use a formula, the value times a million equals whatever the value is, micro. So 0.000012 equals 12 micro, 12 mu, 12 micro. Um, to convert a milli expression back to its original value, we use the formula, the micro value, divided by 1,000 equals the value. So 12 micro divided by 1,000, I'm sorry, To convert a milli expression back to its actual value, we use the formula micro value divided by a million, which is equal to the value. 12 micro divided by a million equals 0.000012. Micro has a prefix in the SI and other systems of unit of units denoting a factor of one millionth. Again, according to Wikipedia. Ah, here we go. I honestly haven't gone all the way through this lecture because I normally don't do this particular lecture. I just get up there and do it. So we move three to the left, six or nine, etc., to the right. So notice that the unit prefix conversions come so notice that the unit prefix conversions move the decimal in multiples of three. For example, 3,000 equals 3K. The decimal position was moved over three and a small k was added. Six, hold on, I, I've, got a, I've got a problem with that one too. Yeah, it is the small letter K. I was thinking it was the big letter K for some reason. Hmm. Okay, I'll, I'll go with that one. Yeah, farad is huge. Remember when I was telling you that I have a one farad capacitor? One farad, that's about this big. It's actually a little smaller, but it, it holds an immense charge. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head, but it is an immense electrical charge. And I probably should should know. So a farad is the basic unit of capacitance. A one farad capacitor can store one coulomb of charge at one volt. One amp represents a rate of flow of one coulomb of electrons per second, and one farad capacitor can hold one amp per second or, or second of electrons at one volt. And if I if I remember correctly, it's like like six. I can't remember it was six million or six billion um, a coulomb electrons. Uh, what's the value of farad? Yeah, can can a one farad capacitor kill you at high voltage energy between one and ten joules? Uh, is considered dangerous. Over fifteen thousand kilovolts. The safe limit is three hundred fifty milli milli joules. It's difficult to estimate a general value, but in AC uh, uh, mains, even one microfarad, one microfarad could kill at 400 volts DC. 125 microfarad could possibly be fatal, and 12, uh, 1,250 microfarads is dead. Is, is dead is death, probably. Hey, Brian. Right. Do not. Do not put your tongue on the uh, electrodes of a one farad capacitor. Oh, my God. Well, look, look what I just read, right? Um, a microfarad can kill. 
at 400 volts DC. 125 microfarad could possibly be fatal, and, and 1250 micro, micro, microfarads is, is dead. Yeah, 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 it's, it's, the, the, uh, they're, they're, <laughs> you know, I took uh, um, uh, CPR one time, and we were all scared that we're going to hurt the patient. And what, what the, what the trainer said was, you can't kill somebody that's already dead. And it made so much sense. <laughs> they're already dead. You can't kill them. But you can zap them and get their heart started again and, and, and make them, uh, yeah, exactly, clear. <laughs> All right, so let me go back to, uh, to, to the lecture. I forgot where I was, but that's okay. Uh, no, not there. Where is it? Did I lose? No, here it is, info numbers. There. So let, let me just start over on this. So, so left, move three, six, nine, et cetera, to the right. Notice that the unit prefix conversions move the decimals in multiples of three. I want to make sure that this looks right on the screen. In multiples of three. Examples, 3,000 equals 3K. The decimal position was moved over three, and the K was added. Yeah, that's where I stopped. Six million equals 6M. The decimal was moved over six places, and the M was added. 0 0.058 equals 58 milli. The decimal position was moved over three, and the M was added. So basically, the decimal on this one was moved three positions to the right. Um, 0 0.000077 equals 77 micro. The decimal position was moved over to the to the right over six, and an M was added. Well, an M wasn't added; uh, a, a mu was added. That's that's definitely a, a typo, um, because if you notice up here with six million, which is equal to six meg. The decimal was moved over six places. So here, the decimal was moved to the left. Here, the decimal was moved to the right. So this should be micro was added. And I could probably correct this before I give it to the students. The example below demonstrates how the decimal is moved in multiples of three. Kilo, you move the decimal three places and add a K. So you move the decimal to the left three places and you add a K. So 1,000 equals 1K, and you move the decimal three places. I'm, I'm glad this is in here like this. So you move the decimal three places to the left. Move the decimal three places and add a K. Same exact thing. You move the decimal three places to the left, and that becomes uh, uh, 2,752 becomes 2.752K. In this one, we move the decimal three places to the right, and we remove the K. So it's 1.000K, or 1K, right? So it becomes 1,000. For this example, we move the decimal places to the right again, and we remove the K. 4.231K could be ohms, could be hertz, um, becomes 4. 1,231. Mega, which is a million, right? We move the decimal six places to the left, and we add an M. So a million becomes one, one M, one meg. Likewise, with 3,491,000, we move the decimal place six to the left, right? And that becomes 3.491 meg. If we, uh, if we have one meg, we move the decimal point to the right, six, and that becomes a million. If we have 7.2 meg, 
meg, we move the decimal point six to the right, and that becomes seven thousand. Uh, well, seven thousand or seven point. We move the decimal six places to the right for seven point two meg, and that becomes seven million two hundred. Now for milli, we move the decimal places and add an M. So 0 0.017, again, whatever the label is, becomes 17 milli. For 0.887, we move the decimal point to the right, and that becomes 887 milli. For, for 96, okay, we move the, the decimal point to the left, and it becomes 0 0.096. And the reason I said it that way is because we normally don't write 96 with a zero at the beginning, but because we're actually taking the decimal point that's right there, moving it three places to the left, then it becomes 0 0.096. We move the decimal three places and remove the M. If we're going, for instance, from 928 milli, um, we go point. 928. So we're basically stripping the, the abbreviation and leaving the label. So if this were, if this were, uh, um, let's say ohms, we have uh, 928 milliohms, then this would be 0.928 ohms. We'll drop the milli totally off of it. Micro. Micro, we do six places, right? So 0.00. 0042 becomes 42 micro. Um, 0 0.000133 becomes 133 micro. Now, if we have 53 micro, again, I'm, I'm not speaking those zeros, 53 micros, the decimal is right here. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and that becomes point see some one two three four five oh yeah six that just doesn't look right one two three four five six do you see the problem there this one's wrong also this this is okay 53 micro we move it six one two three Three, four, five, six. This should be zero, 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 five, three. Not, not five zeros, but four zeros. Because if if it was, if we move, if we make the zero, 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 five, three, if we if we take it, say say it's say it's uh, amps, okay, then then it would actually end up being five point three not 53 like like it is here I'm gonna look at it again but if but if we're moving at six places one two three four five six yeah so it's four zeros and this has got five so this is wrong that will be corrected unless that's there to, to make people think yep it is a problem so move the decimal place six places and remove the micro. See, like this one, see how it's got three zeros? That one's got three zeros. So this one's definitely wrong, Luana. Um, okay, good night, Brian. I, I just saw it. If you're still there, good night, bud. So 000, 00747 micro, whatever the label is, becomes point zero 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 seven four seven just the label so if this is uh, 747 micro ohms then it becomes point zero 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 seven four seven ohms So table 2.5 is a list of electrical prefixes, although there are more prefixes 
than the ones shown, and there are more. Uh, these will be the primary pre prefixes used within the course. Uh, the prefix mega, big M symbol, um, multiplier is, is, is a million. Kilo, symbol, capital K, remember I was questioning that a second ago, 1,000. Uh, the unit, uh, unit symbol, there's no conversion for unit. Milli is small m which is 0 0.001, micro is 0 0.00001, nano is 0 0.00000001, ooh, ooh, and that other one's wrong also. Pico is, is uh, actually 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 in essence, it grows. It grows by by three. If you see, there's two zeros here for milli. There's two zeros, so we grow by three. So we got five zeros, right? So one. My mouse is ticking. Two, three, four, five. Right? Yeah, five. Then it grows by three more. So so then pico is actually. Three more than this is right here. One zero? I'm thinking it's missing three. Because see, these two values are the same. And if we're going by what I just said, which is three, okay, this is zero, zero, one. So there, there's there's my zero, zero, one. We added three. So one, two, three, four, five. So one, two, three, four, five. And see, there's my three, right? So logic would dictate that this would have three more zeros on it. See what I'm saying, Luann? Because if you think about it, it's... Yes, 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 exactly. Yeah, I was, I was ask, actually asking for a con uh, confirmation too, but... Um, so identifying electrical values using unit prefixes is a part of the nomenclature of the electrical industry. And nomenclature means the labeling, the way you you define something, like a description. Uh, that's what nomenclature means. Okay. So that concludes the lecture on numbers. Thank you. All right, let me... Let me see what else I've got in here. Wow. I think I put more than what than what's on the syllabus. I haven't even gone into color codes. I haven't gone into resistance and series, breadboards. I want to have to do it all though. All right, let's see. I think that's going to conclude numbers. This is the numbers matching quiz. I'll just show you, um, Luana, what, uh, and anybody else that's out there, uh, I'm saying Luana, distracted by salad. Um, but this is what I'm going to give them as far as a worksheet for numbers after that. That'll be the lab. And I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think. I may actually... Maybe if I add color codes, that'll probably be enough. Because see, let me see something here. I've got 32 lectures, 32 lessons, basically. And, and actually, numbers was lesson number one. So I probably, but, but I'm going to have to go with two lessons a week, I think. Because it's a hybrid class which means I'm going to have to have two lessons, I think, for them to... Because they're only going to be able to come to class for lab one day. That's kind of what I'm thinking. I probably need to at least start color codes, which would be the second lesson. Even though I've got the three lessons. That's what I want to do. I wanted to go one lesson forward because I, I think the easier stuff is probably better in the beginning. Oh, and the editing of this video is going to be horrendous, I think. I hope this works. If not, I'm in trouble. I'm going to have to do it all over again. But I'll probably end up recording it 
uh, by myself then if, if that's the case, because this is a test after all. I'm going to look at the color codes too. Let's, let's go to color codes. Oh no. Yeah, that's right. That's red for Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna just go by an order. Let's let's let me look at the the breadboard. Okay. Yeah, I think it's yeah, I remember it wasn't too too big. I can probably go through this one quickly. So a breadboard. Let me make this bigger. So a breadboard. A breadboard is a device that's used to make temporary electrical connections. Electrical connections are made with metal clips underneath the plastic face. Then a wire is placed in or a component is push, pushed into those holes in the breadboard, which allows the electrical connections in the row, in the same row or column. I guess I'll use this one. So, for instance, and I'm going to, I'm going to, Try to take your suggestion, which was a good one. Let me see. Oh boy. The bot at the mansion is broken. You're gonna look. Oh, I just got interrupted, didn't I? I'll, I'll come back. Let, let me let me deal with this real quick. So I'm I've run a, a portal bot on an Asheron's call server which is an old game the mansion bot is this one here and they're saying it's broken and it's on I'm, I'm not certain how it's broken hmm Yeah, she does take a knee nicely. Let me see. Yeah, um, I can't remember. She waves here. That, that's what she looks like on this on this end. This isn't a, a two thousand game that I've been playing. In fact, I'm on two different servers with with a bunch of uh let's see what did she say i was there but not now you know let me let me let me see if she'll move back because if i move her she should come back ah, i think she is broken her name is seven of nine so let me Tell seven of nine. This is another bot that's that's in another part of the world. Seven of nine. Where to? Yeah, she. Tell seven of nine. Primary. Then she should open up the primary portal. I'm surprised that she didn't walk back to the, where she was supposed to be. Oh, oh, I bet she's out of components. I bet you. Either that or I'm just going to have to. No? I think I'm just going to restart her. By restarting her, I think that'll reset everything. I don't know why. I don't know why it was stuck. Because here it says that, uh, you know, I've been put into a queue. I've been uh, currently buffing. She can't be buffing. She doesn't buff. Well, yeah, she does buff. 
She must be out of something. Okay, wait a second. Let's bring her back up. Let's see. Let's see if this fixes her. Yeah, see, now she's going back. So um, now I can tell her. See, she's gonna, she's gonna, yeah, she opened up the portal and then she's gonna, she's gonna step to the right position and then, and then. Uh, All right. All right. Okay. All right. We'll get there. Let, let's let's start back up on this. In fact, I'll just I'll just start. Are we at the beginning? Yeah, I think so. I'll just start and then just keep my pace. So breadboard. So breadboard is a device. Yeah, I don't have to do that, do I? I already said that. So the connections on the breadboard. You can't. Let's see. So the connection on the breadboard are actually in here. The the holes that you plug items into, like this, you can you can take a wire and plug it in to to the breadboard, and then jumper it to another spot. And it's really hard to to see this, but jumper it to another spot on another part of the breadboard. And it could be a switch like, like that is, like that is right there, or it could be a resistor or, or something like that. So you basically build circuits on this before you make them into, uh, into circuit boards, uh, kind of prototype it first and then, and then make the, the circuit board and then put the components on the circuit board. So, So the breadboard layout in the photo that here on the on the on this here, notice that every hole is a place for an electrical connection. So you can put any any one of those uh, connections on there, and uh, the electrical connections are in in columns and rows. Up here they're in rows. If this were the power, if we plugged a, a plus voltage here then all these holes would be would would have continuity therefore you would have the power across them all if you plug say the negative side down here then all these would have the the negative voltage on there that you would have uh, and it doesn't have to be the negative voltage whatever voltage you have would be across there so These down here, and I, I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll, I'll show you this in a second. These down here, instead of going across, they go down. And you, you can't really see it. Yeah, it's not very well defined, but it's one, two, three, four, five. These go down this way. And I think this says like, I, I can't make it out, but A, B, C, D, E. So it's like A1, A2, A3. They actually have like a matrix numbering designation. Sometimes when you wire things, they'll say oh, plug, you know, a resistor at A1 and at wherever else. Um, but these, these have continuity this way. So this little row of five holes is, has continuity. Likewise, this row has continuity by itself, different than the continuity on the other one. So it's like, like a, a connection on each one of those uh, vertical lines, as opposed to for the power rails, which are, which are the horizontal rails. So that's that's how that's how those work. The the plus and the minus are horizontal horizontally connected, whereas the these down here, where you normally would put the components, are vertically connected. And with ICs and such, you straddle. You straddle this this line here because 
this row is not connected to that row. In showing it, this this switch right here is straddling that row. And see see what I was saying about it having letters and actually probably this way I can show it better. Having letters and numbers so that each pin actually has a designation. I don't know if it'll focus. Yeah, see right there? And the point of that, I, that I was trying to make is that this switch, it's got four connections. It's actually straddling that right there. So I can plug, I can plug up here and I can plug down here to it. So going back to this, let me make this a little smaller. This right here kind of shows us kind of shows us what those connections look like. Now, the one I showed you didn't have these over on this end, but if you can imagine this being on the top, I'm surprised that they don't didn't have it on the top. The, the top row is totally connected all the way across, and, the, and this row is totally connected all the way there, but these are connected vertically, as, as you can see. I'm surprised that these aren't that way but but they are they they are supposed to be uh, connected these are connected left and right the only exception is in the center some breadboards let me let me show you this some breadboards jump from like right there to right there see that gap right there and you have to put a jumper from one side to the other. I've had I've had various students that when they're you know putting circuits on there, they go, "Well, I got power here, but I don't have power here." And the problem is is there isn't a jumper between those two right there. That's the only. And some boards are that way, and some boards aren't. And some of our trainers, you actually have to put a little jumper in between those two spots. Okay, so back to this. So in figure three, four, five wires are placed in the breadboard. The electrical connections are wire A and B. Wire A and B, wire B have an electrical connection. There are five electrical connections, electrical connection points that are common connections. The five electrical connection points in the column have no other electrical connections. Wire C, D, E. Wire C, D and E, uh, an electrical connection, they are connected in the same column. The five electrical connections point in the column and they have no other electrical connection. Then wire B and C, wire B and C have no electrical connection. Notice the gap between the two columns of the connections. This gap separates the top five connections from the uh, bottom five. Each column in the breadboard consists of five electrical connection points which are isolated from each other. So what it's saying is, and, and I, I can't, other than making it smaller, yeah, I can't actually. So wires A and B have an electrical connection. Wires A and B, because the row goes up and down, have electrical connections. Wires C, D, E have also an electrical connection. B and C, though, this one and that one doesn't, because of what I was saying, it, it, this, this, this spot is, is uh, uh, not connected. So each inside column in a breadboard consists of five electrical connections that are isolated from each other. So what it's saying is that these five on the east side, you know, each individual one is isolated from the one on the other side of that little trough, I guess, or that little that little row in the center. That's actually just a just a a, a, a mark down it. Or so regarding the horizontal connections. Um, the connections closest to the red and blue lines, the electrical connections are in parallel to the line. So all these, like I was saying, have continuity. The, the blue line and then the red line the same way. Wires A and B have an electrical connection. A and B, which is here and there, 
you know, with the exception that I was saying that in the center you might have to put a jumper. Uh, wires C and D, which is down here on the red rail, they have continuity. Redboard connects the closest to the redboard connects closest to a red or blue line or common to the color. Breadboard connection breadboard connections closest to the red or blue lines are common to the color. Yeah, so do not have electrical connections to the column of five connections. Oh, oh, I see what it's saying. What it's saying is that these right here aren't connected at all to these five down here. That, that's all it's saying. Why didn't it just say that? A breadboard is designed to make quick, easy, and temporary connections. And that's, they're, they're, they're made that way so that they're made that way so that you can you can wire up a circuit without having to create a circuit board before you actually go through the expense but you check it and you make sure that it, the circuit does what you want it to do again before you create a circuit board or a final circuit anyway thank you that's the end of Thank you. That's the end of the breadboard lecture. Okay. Let me look at this resistor PDF. One of these is actually the, the lab. The other one is the resistor color codes. Yeah. Boy, this is pretty big. That's okay. Let me see what this other one is. Hmm. This one's small. I guess it must be an addition to the other one. All right. Let me I think I'm just going to project information. Let me see. Is this, I think. I want to say, I think this is actually, yeah, this is the project. Hmm, maybe not, maybe not. Yeah, this is, this is the, the lecture part. Okay. So what is this one then? Hey, Draken. <laughs> you missed class, yeah. Um, and yes, class is in session. Hey, Batman's here too. Hello, Batman. Notice I don't have the bot guys going on. Um, what I'm trying to do is, is uh, uh, and Batman, I'm not going to be showing any any links other than other than the lectures for, for these uh, electronic lectures, man. Uh, Sorry, bud. Um, but what I'm doing is is I'm I'm putting the the uh, the content for a class that I, that I'm doing, and uh, and you know it's what midnight? Yeah, it's midnight. I've been I've been at this for I don't know a couple hours at least, but I've got to get through this last lecture, which is resistor color codes. So with that, let's talk about resistor color codes. Oh. And it is midnight. My coin, huh? Well, I'm not even going to change the what I said for my coin, buddy. But thank you. Tell you what, I'll do it after the lecture. So hang around, and then then we'll do it then. I've got to get I got to get done through this. Okay, because um, this isn't a regular stream. This is actually going to be either part of class. Or, um, or, or going to become my, my lecture. I mean, it is definitely going to become my lecture uh, for, for the class that I'm teaching. So let's talk a little bit about resistor color codes. Resistor color codes, um, the, the value of resistor is represented in, in the color codes themselves. And I've got, I've got a resistor here.
And that resistor actually has certain colors. That designates the resistance value or the value in, in, in ohms of the, of the resistor. So the way it works is the colors correspond with the numbers one through nine. Uh, many resistors have got four bands to identify the, the resistance. The first two colors are the primary values. So this color and this color basically starts off the numbering of, of the value. The third band, in this case the green one, is the multiplier. And the fourth band is usually gold or silver and is actually the percentage deviation of tolerance, plus or minus. Um, so in this case, with this resistor, the first number is, is red, the second number is orange. So if we look at this code here, uh, the first one's red, so red is equal to two. The second number is orange, so that's equal to three. In addition to that, we, we add zeros or, or multiplier of green, which is five. So two, three, followed by five zeros or uh, 23 or 230,000, right? Uh, I think it's 2 million. Let's see. Two, three, followed by five zeros. No, 2.3 million. 2 million, 300,000 ohms. Or if you were here for the, for the prior lecture for the, uh, or if you watched the prior lecture, it's 2.3 mega ohm, right? In, in, in addition to that, the, the resistance, or the, the, the tolerance, I'm sorry, in addition to that, the tolerance being that the, that the fourth band is silver, the tolerance, since gold is 5% and silver is 10%, the tolerance is 10%. So it's, it's a, uh, uh, 2.3 million plus or minus 10%, whatever that 10% is. And 10% of 2 million is, oh, this is where I start calculating stuff because my brain is fried right now. But uh, what's 10% of, of uh, 2.3 million? Or Come on, come on, guys, do, do the math for me. And, and I usually normally have somebody uh, uh, telling me. Um, is it 230,000? Let me bring up a calculator. You know, I've got a calculator probably here. Maybe if I can find the calculator. So, so we've got, what do we say? 2305 zeros. So a tenth of that, if we multiply that by 0.1, which is a tenth, that gives us 230,000. So that resistor value is, is plus or minus 230,000. So it's, it can either be, um, let me see if I can put this, in memory so so that's in memory so plus two three one two three four five it's it's going to be anything from 2530 in other words two million five hundred thirty ohms to to 2 million, 70,000. So the range of this resistor is going to be um, any anywhere from 2 million. I'm going to do it in megs. It's either going to be 2.53 megs to 2.07 megs. So it'll be that range in there. And that range is what uh, almost almost half a meg because if we multiply this by two, that's almost that's almost half a meg. 
That's almost 500,000 ohms. So that's a 10% resistor. Gold resistors are, are, uh, are 5%, which would obviously be more, uh, the tolerance is, is, is a lot better, more precise. Now, um, you notice the color codes over here? The different colors have numbers. And it's black, brown, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, gray, white. There's all sorts of ways to remember that. Oh, the practical application is that you resist the flow of current. And obviously, if you need to, if you need to be more precise, you would want to make sure that that range isn't isn't real real big. It's you know exactly the value you're wanting. Um, I mean, if if that makes sense, because resistors are used to control the flow of current. Um, if you want to make sure that you don't burn a component out, or say say an LED, let's let's talk about an LED, which actually it's it's it has a lot of a lot of tolerance to to that. But um, if you want it to light at a specific uh, intensity, you don't want and you want to say you have five LEDs, right? You want those resistors to be as as close to each other as possible so that the light output is the same. But if one resistor is is 25, you know, 2.5 mags, and the other resistor is, is 2 mags, what will happen is the 2 meg one will let, will not restrict the flow of current more, so that LED over there is going to light brighter than the other one. Yeah, does that make sense? I don't know. I don't know if it's if it's to bend a character knee or whatever. But uh, an LED is obviously a light emitting diode. But 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 the point is is so that when you're controlling something, whatever it is, you control it as accurately as possible. If it doesn't matter, you know, you can have that 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 sloppiness in the control of it. Um, if if that makes sense. So. With with five band resistors, basically it's just you just have one more number involved in, in the calculation. Whereas here we only were looking at two numbers. Here we have three numbers, then the multiplier, and then the tolerance. Chip resistors. We s chip resistors. They're not identified by color codes, but by a number. The number is interpreted such as um, you know, similar to a color band. The number 732 on the chip resistor indicates that it is 730, I'm sorry, 7,000. The number 732 on a chip resistor indicates that it is a 7,300 ohm resistor. The first two numbers are the primary number and the third number is the multiplier. So 7,300 or 73 with two zeros, 7,300 ohms. So that's pretty much resistor color codes in, in, in what, the, what the, the, the color code numbers are, what the bands are. Now, I'll look at this. Yeah, I wanted to make sure this wasn't the lab, and, it, and it's not. So, that was just a quick overview of resistance. Let's go a little more deeper into it. So, resistance is, is like the flow of water is used uh, when it is controlled. So, it would, would not be practical to fill a paper cup with water using a fire hydrant. So, an electrical power, electrical power must be controlled in order for it to be useful. One way to control the flow of electrical power is with resistance. The term resistance describes the opposition to the electrical current flow. Writing numbers zero when you're measuring means 
zero and infinite is, is another one. So in, in a previous lab, the ohmmeter was used to measure zero ohms and infinite ohms or, or OL, which is what the meter um, was showing. How many values are between zero and infinite? Well, every number is between zero and infinite, right? So you can have any form of resistance between zero and infinity, depending on how high the meter will will uh, will read the resistance. The ohmmeter can be used to measure resistance values that are greater than zero and basically less than infinite. That's so so important. Ohmmeter setup. Your ohmmeter must be set to measure ohms. There's there, there are many different models of meters, and you may need to ask me, the instructor, to help you with the setup. Ohmmeters can be damaged, and ohmmeter can be damaged if it is used in a live circuit, and we've discussed that before. Um, an example is a heating element has a rated value of 100 ohms. The ohmmeter can be used to measure the resistance. The symbol shown is, is, uh, the, symbol shown is the heating element. There's the heating element. You, you've seen heat ele heating elements before, right? The heating element is represented by a resistor or a line that's zigzag. That, that means a resistor, basically, with a, with a value over it. So it might say a heating element. It might say the value. But you know it's a resistor because of that. So this is kind of the schematic representation of the physical uh, component. Measurement. The ohmmeter can be used to verify that the heating element has 100 ohms of resistance. How do we do that? Well, we connect the black lead to the common port on, on the uh, meter. We connect the red lead to the ohm port. We make sure that, that the uh, dial is set, for this case, just a little bit more than the value that we know. We know the, the, uh, the heating element is 100 ohms, so we're going to set the meter to 200. If we don't know what the value is, you set it to the highest ohm, and then you work down to the smaller one. Because if you set it too low, it's going to show an open. It's going to show, oh, no, overload. So you always want to go the highest range first, and then work your way down. So when the dial is set to 200, it's at the maximum value of the setting that you're going to need. It will not measure anything greater than 200 ohms. Well, we know we know the, uh, the the heating element is 100, so we're safe there. So at that point, we take, like I said, we connect the black lead to the common, we connect the red lead to the ohm, and we put it across the heating element across the ends. And guess what it reads? Yep, 100, right? Too shabby. So another example, another heating element is rated at a thousand ohms. The value can be checked with the ohm meter also. Again, you do the same setup. The black lead goes on the common port, the red lead goes on the ohm port. The difference is the range that you set the meter to. You set it to 2000. Because you know the, the heating element is a thousand. Now you could go all the way to 2 meg and come back down, but because you know what it is, you just go just above what you know the measurement should be. When the dollar sets 2,000, it's at the maximum value of the setting, and it won't measure any value larger than 2,000, but it will measure 1,000, right? Notice the value shown is 1.0. Since the scale is 2k ohms, and it is, see, it's 2k ohms, any value shown is going to be shown in K. So the meter will actually show 1K. That's what it's showing. But the range is actually 2K. Whereas down here, it's 200. So if this is 0 to 200 and we're seeing 1.0, we're only going to be looking at 1 ohm. But because the, the range is actually set for 2K, which means 0 to 2,000, and we see 1, well, hey, that's 1K. If it were 1 ohm, it would be showing 0 0.001. Let that sink in for a second. We'll talk about here how to remember it. Um, 
I, I don't know if they go into how to remember it, but there's. Hold on a second. Let me, let me, let me. There's some that are bad, and there's some that are okay. <laughs> of course, the one I can remember is the one that's bad, Luana. Um, how to remember resistor color code. So, yeah, we can we can see. So, look, this these are all the ways. Um, th these are all the ways. Okay, so here's one. Big boys race our young girls, but violet gray wins. Okay, if you if you can remember that, it's it's black, brown, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, gray, white. Beetle Bailey runs over your general before very good witnesses. Again, black, brown, red, orange, yellow, green. Blue, violet, right? Gray, and white. Now there's others, okay, that I'm not going to go into. And actually, this is a lot more than what I've ever known, and I don't see any of the bad ones, which which is good, which is good. Um, but there's there's your way to remember them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Badly burnt resistors on your. Ground bus void general warranty. That's pretty. That's pretty neat. But again, the general thought is that it's black, brown, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, gray, white. No matter how you spell it out, as if you can remember what those letters are, you just remember the color code. And of course, black starts at zero. Uh, brown is one. Uh, Red is two, et cetera, et cetera, down the line. So as you can see, as you can see by by these colors right here. Okay, so let's go back to this. Oh, not that one. Not that one, but that one. Okay, so let's go on. Is smaller. So a resistor, resistors, a resistor is a device that is placed in an electrical circuit to control the current flow. Resistors will be used in this course to simulate electrical loads and to create various electrical circuits. So the resistor values, every resistor has an ohmic value. The value of a typical resistor is found by interpreting the resistor's color bands. The most, most resistors have four color bands. Each color corresponds to a number. So again, black, brown, red, orange, etc. cetera, zero, one through nine. You had mentioned having ways to remember, but didn't give them kind of scroll moment and moved to, to something else. Yeah, yeah, I, I showed you. I, I, I showed you. This is this is how we remember them. Maybe it was a squirrel moment, but it was it was at a good point. Okay. Yeah, I just I jumped over there because it, it, it actually fell right in place. Um, and, I, and I might edit it and cut it, and, but I, I doubt it. I'll probably just leave it that way. So those, again, are, are, the, are the color codes for the bands. And then there's the tolerances. Gold is 5. Silver is 10. Um, regarding the color bands, the first band is the first significant number. The second band is the second significant, significant number. The third band is the multiplier. And then the fourth band is the tolerance, like I explained. Um, let's look at another one again. So resistor color interpretation. Resistor 1 is a typical four color band resistor. Each color corresponds to a number shown on the previous page. The numbers are then used to determine the value of the resistor. So we have orange, blue, brown, and gold. So in this case, 
the, the resistor value, the first and the second color bands of the resistor are used as the face value. It's the number you start with. The third color is the multiplier, and it basically identifies how many zeros are going to be added to the first two numbers. And then more about the band later, which we've gone into. So orange is 3, blue is 6, so therefore it's 36. Brown is 1, so it's 36 plus 1, 0. That's 360 ohms. The gold, hey, I'm just going to go into it. The gold is 5%, so 5% of 36 is, uh, um, is, is 18 plus or minus. So 36 or 360 plus 18 or 36 minus 18. See how I did the calculation there in my head? Because 5%, I thought about this, and I said, hey, 10% is 36. So what's half of 36? Well, 18 is half of 36. So just a little, a little play on, on, uh, on math there. If you can remember the 10%, just cut it in half, and that's your 5%. The number 36 was derived from the first two colors. Since the third color, brown, corresponds to the number 1, one zero was then added to the 36. Another example, if the third band on the resistor, number one, was orange, what is the value of the resistor? Well, if the third band was, was a three, then the value would be orange, blue, which is three six, followed by three zeros, which is 36,000. And again, the same exact thing here. If, if it's gold, it's going to be 5%. It's going to be um, 1,800, right? Because 10% of 36,000 is 3,600. So therefore, 5% is, is, uh, is 1,800. The number 36 was derived from the first two colors. Since the third color, orange, corresponds to the number 3, three zeros were added. I love the way they spelled were were added to the number 36. So the multipliers, the third band is called the multiplier. Using a calculator, you solve the value of 10 to the third. The answer is 1,000. The third band, and this is another way to, to do the calculation. The third band, on the previous example, added three zeros to the, to the first two numbers, 36,000. The third band is the multiplier. For example, 36 was multiplied by 10 to the third, or 1,000, the multipliers are shown below. And really, the multipliers are the same, basically, as what we were talking about earlier. Um, the, uh, the, the mega is, is a million, the kilo is a 1,000, the, the milli is 0 .001, the micro is, is 0 .000001, and I'm not going to say the other ones, as you can see what they are. Uh, but the point is, is it's a meg is 10 to the 6th power, a kilo is 10 to the 3rd, a milli is 10 to the negative 3rd, a micro is 10 to the negative 6, nano and pico are 10 to the negative 9, and 10 to the negative 12. Now, the fourth band, the resistor number 1 has determined to be a 360 ohm resistor, and we've kind of talked about this, but I'm going to just go over it again. A typical resistor usually has a fourth band that's either gold or silver. Most of them are gold. Why? Because gold is, is more precise, right? It's 5%. So most of them are gold. The fourth band indicates what we were talking the, or terming the tolerance. The tolerance of resistor is an acceptable range of ohmic values for the resistor. When they do the calculation in a circuit, they take those tolerances. So if it's this much more or this much less resistance, I'm still going to get the same current limiting range that, that, that I need is kind of how, how, how they engineer it or design it. Uh, the fourth color band indicates the tolerance and percentages. The two most common, and notice how it says that the two most common, leads you to believe there's more, right? Are gold 5%, silver 10%. Resistor number one, the gold band on resistor number one indicates a 5% tolerance. The value of the resistor is expected to be uh, 360, so 5% of 360 is 18. Isn't that what I said? Uh, this means that the resistor's value is between 342, which is 360 minus 18, and 378, which is 360 plus 18. If the fourth band were silver, then it would indicate 10%. Again, as, as I explained it earlier, 
just to cut to the chase, this would mean that the resistor's value would be between 324, which is 360, minus 36, and 396, which is 360 plus 36. So that's kind of the, the, uh, the tolerance of the resistor. So that resistor, we will say that that resistor is a 360 ohm resistor. But in our mind and in our calculations, we know that that value, if it's a 5% value, that value of that resistor is going to be between 342 and 378. If we ohm it out, yep, that resistor is good. It doesn't matter, you know, that it's, that it, as long as it's in between those values. Likewise, the, the second one, uh, if it's if it's 10%, it can be anywhere from 324 to 396. But you see, 360, that's a number, right? Well, if we take 36 away from it, if we take 10%, we've got a whole 20% range there that, that the resistance value could, could change. And it might affect something. Um, it's just, does it need to be that precise? <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> um, so some more examples. Shown below are the examples of resistor code interpretation. So the color of this resistor is brown, red, orange, gold. So I know that from the chart, brown is one, red is two, orange is three. So that becomes one, two, one, two, followed by three zeros, 12,000. Excuse me. 5% um, means that it is uh, 600 plus or minus. So it's, it's 11,400 through 12,600. 12,000 minus 600, 12,000 plus 600. Uh, for for uh, red, brown, red with a gold uh, tolerance, it's uh, 21,000. Two, red, one, brown, two, two zeros, 2,100. Well, 5% of 2,900 See, I was sitting here thinking, okay, it's 210. What's half of 210? 110, right? Or 105, sorry. 105. So it's 2100 minus 105, 2100 plus 105, thus 1995 to 2205. The third example, orange, three, brown, one, yellow, four. Oh, this one's 310,000. 10% of that, what's 10%? Um, 10% is 3,100, right? So 31, 3,000, 310,000 plus 31,000, right? Is, is three, 341,000. Uh, 310,000 minus 3,100 is 279. So that range for a 10% or a silver band is 279,000 through 341,000. Now let's do one more. Geez, how many of these are there? Green and blue and black. So green is five. Blue is six. Oh, that's 56. But wait a second. Black is zero. So we don't have any zeros. So that becomes, and it's a 5%, right? So that becomes 56, um, What's half of 56? 25, 25 and a half, right? What's half of 56? Twenty-five plus three, which is twenty-eight. And actually it's twenty-eight point eight, right? I mean, let me bring up the calculator. It's it's starting to get late, guys. It's it's at midnight thirty. Um, fifty-six times 0 0.05 gives me 2.8. So so 5% is 2.8. And as you can see, 56 plus 2.8 is 58.8. 56 minus uh, 2.8 is 53.2. 782. 7,800 or 78 followed by two zeros. 5% of that is this range here. I'm not going to calculate it. It's pretty obvious. Uh, five color bands. Suppose a 1250 ohm resistor was required. 130? Where did you get 130? Uh, 
The first number next to the second and the third number amount of zeros. Was that way back? Do, do I just need to go on? Or do we need to talk about it, Luana? I'm just going to go on, okay? Anyway, um, so five color bands. Oh, oh, I got you. I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I hear you. Um, suppose, and, and luckily, I don't have to go to work tomorrow, so I'm fine. And and I'm not I'm not that sleepy or tired. Uh, I'm just wanting to finish. You know, that's that's really the yes. Thank you. I'll go on. So five color bands. So five color bands. So five color bands. Suppose a 1250 ohm resistor was required. As close as a four color band resistor, you could get the value of either 1200, a 1200 ohm resistor, brown, red, red, or a 1300 ohm resistor, brown, orange, red. So those are the two resistors you could get. So a five color band resistor offers a wider range of values. The color band interpretation of a five band resistor is similar to a four color band resistor. The only difference is that there's an additional significant number added. So a 1250 ohm resistor using a five color band breaks down to this, brown one, red two, green five, brown one, the fifth band is silver or gold. So another example is, well, let me go back. So a 1250 ohm resistor using a five color band is one for brown, two for red, five for green. There's our 1250 followed by a brown, which is one, and then whatever the tolerance is. So we can we can actually change the tolerance with a five band resistor to a more accurate uh, value if, if needed. Um, and of course, they're gonna be more expensive, right? Or not, but, but probably more. Um, another five color band example, for instance, is, is red, orange, orange, red, gold. Well, that turns out to be red is two, orange is three, orange is three, so it's 23 followed by three zeros, 23,300, because we've got, I'm sorry, red is two, orange is three, orange is three, and the fourth band, which is our multiplier, is red two, so that becomes two, three, three, followed by two zeros. Now it's a 5%, it applies the same way, there's the tolerance of 5% plus or minus 23,300. Or we could say 23.3K becomes this over here. And then guess what? We can say uh, this over here is 22.135K to 24.465K. But you normally don't say it that way. Anyway. So resistors under 10K. Resistor values under 10K are identified with four color bands. The third color band is either gold or silver and is the multiplier. The third band multipliers are gold, which is equal to 0 0.01, or silver, which is 0.1. So for example, um, the first color is green, the second color is blue, the, the silver if we put silver in there instead of one of the other colors, well, that would be 0.1. So 56 times 0.1, right? That, that value of that resistor becomes 5.6 ohms. And of course, the, the tolerance is the same thing, plus or minus 5%, which 5.32 to 5.88 is, is the range of a 5.6 ohm resistor with a 5% tolerance. Chip resistors, we kind of talked a little bit about this. Printed circuit boards are also can also use what's called chip resistors. The value of a chip resistor is identified with numbers. The first significant number, the second significant number, and the multiplier are identified. The value of the resistor shown is 47K because it is 4, 7, plus 3 zeros. 47K or 47,000 ohms. Most resistors in this course are four color band resistors. It is important to be able to interpret color codes and verify the interpretation with, uh, with ohmmeter measurements.
So that concludes info on resistors. Thank you. I think that's it, too. Come on, come on, get, get small, get small. Interesting. It looks like my browser's locked up. Let me kill this. Might even be my computer. Oh no! <laughs> it's sharing my screen. Let's stop sharing the screen. Yeah, oh my god. Don't tell me that I can't end this. Yeah, isn't that crazy, Luana? Of course, of course. Wow. Yeah, it does appear that way, doesn't it? Because I can't, I, I can't turn anything off. I can't can't move my browser I can't I can't well I can do that let me see if yeah see wonder if I do this if it'll shut my windows down no nope. all right let me let me control out delete and kill the calculator Let's see calculator end task yeah, and that, that didn't like that, did it? Let's see. Let's see if it was a calculator hanging it up. No. Yeah, I, I see you're there. And I'm sure you can hear me. So, it's not my computer. Let me see if I can kill Discord. Maybe it's Discord. Discord's gone. Maybe that was hanging it. Okay. Oh, I see a, a, a busy... When I'm over there, let me kill Microsoft Teams. It looks like it looks like Chrome is. Yeah, yeah, I, I hear you. I see you too. It looks like Chrome is, but as you can see from right there, like Chrome is actually the what's what's uh, taking up all the CPU right now but it's not maxing it out I'm thinking well hopefully it recorded all that and it's uploading it to to both Facebook and Twitch right I mean uh, YouTube and Twitch well I have a sneaky feeling and see it shows 11 windows for for Chrome. Yeah, yeah, I, I, th I think you're right. But see, it shows 11 windows, but I only see one Chrome window. And this one here is the, uh, the calculator, which has already been closed. Well, whatever, wherever it, uh, Yeah, maybe so. Maybe so. If if my stream drops, and I, I'm sure I'm sure it'll just end everything, or I would hope it would. Let me see if I can Alt Tab. There's no Alt Tab. If I kill my browser and start it, that that might work. But at this point, uh, close. It's not letting me close anything. This one will close. Let's see if that'll close. Nope. Mm. Wow. Wow. 
Let me go back in and see again if I can do this task manager. Google. 